Hey groups, so excited to join you guys wherever I'm joining you guys today. Um, this past week, we got the chance to talk about choices. We are in a series right now on relationship to God, so we've talked about fear, we've talked about trust, what it means to be mindful in our relationships to God, and this weekend we spoke on what it means to choose God in your relationship, and actually being intentional about the choice that we make, not just living life saying that we choose Him, but having our actions actually speak louder than our words. Um, and that one has worked through my life. I hope it works through yours too. So we're going to just dive right into questions today, and I hope you guys are able to discuss and have, have some good conversations about what it means to choose God in a new way in your life. So let's jump right in. This first question I think is great. If you, if you could make the choice to go anywhere in the world, where would you go and why? Um, for me, I love like the exotic southern areas like the Aruba. I think that would be super fun. Wherever they've got like those things that are right out on the water and the water's super blue, that is where I would love to go if money wasn't an issue. So where would you love to go if you could choose to go anywhere? Question number two, explain a moment in your life where you made the wrong choice. Question number three, and I want a quick read from Proverbs um, in the section we actually read in the service this week. It's from Proverbs, it says this, choose my instruction instead of silver. Knowledge rather than choice gold, for wisdom is more precious than rubies, and nothing you desire can compare with her. In what ways, here's the question, in, one, in what ways have you struggled with choosing God's instruction and God's wisdom um, over money, power, and fame? Question number four, and I want you guys to start out by reading from Matthew 7, 23 through 26, and then pause this until you read it, and then we'll ask the question. It says this, what kind of fears do you have about denying yourself? So in, the, in those verses, it talks about denying yourself and taking up your cross. What kind of fears do you have about that? Question number five, what do you think Jesus means when he says to take up your cross daily? Um, and at the end of Matthew, if you want to look into this a little bit more, Matthew 27 speaks to the journey of the cross, of what it looked like for Jesus to take up his cross. So if you want a little bit of help coming from that, take a look at Matthew 27, specifically 27 through 54, uh, to get a little bit of a hint of what that looks like. Question number six, um, now that you know a little bit about what journey it looked like for Jesus as he took up the cross, and maybe you know a little bit of the disciples, what it meant for them to take up their crosses, what does it look like for you to take up your cross? Make this personal. What does it mean in your life to take up the cross? I don't want to leave you guys today with the image of just the you carrying your cross because sometimes we can live in that tension and it's, it's okay to live in that, but I want to leave you with a sense of hope um, because there is a reason that we carry our cross for Jesus Christ and what that means in our life. So I want you guys to talk about as we end today what it means for you to have hope and why you can have hope and why it's worth it to carry the cross. So what, why can you have that hope?
And as always, as we end, um, talk about what hit you over the week with this message or with devotions, if there's anything, if there was anything that stuck out to you guys, and make sure you end with prayer. We'd love to circle our groups with prayer. Make sure you ask what's going on in each other's lives and be in prayer for each other. Um, but if you have time after that, I would strongly encourage you head to digging deeper um, because the digging deeper section really hits on something that we didn't get a chance to go too much into with devotions or the message or even the group's questions there. And the question is this, are you a true or false disciple? Um, there's a passage in there that I was hoping to get into the message, but we didn't have time. So this is a way to dive a bit deeper into what we were hoping to get into the message that we didn't get a chance to. So I would strongly encourage you to do that because there's, there's some pretty interesting stuff when we start thinking about, are we a true disciple or are we one of the false disciples that Jesus talks about? I think that's really fascinating. So if you have time, take a look at that. If not, I cannot wait to see you guys next week. Um, have a great week.